Meet the Farmer TV is made possible by the generous support of Planet Earth Diversified and Melly Productions, with additional support from Flavor Magazine, serving the Piedmont's local food and wine culture. Hello, I'm Michael Clark for Meet the Farmer TV. Today we're going to bring Mark and his staff from La Trois Restaurant out to the farm to look at the greens and the microgreens, the herbs that are growing throughout the winter, and also talk to them about what we should be growing out in the field. We'll look out in the field at what's growing now, some baby spinach, some peas and new spinach seeded. We'll find out what they'd like us to grow. They're talking about some black carrots and some heirloom tomatoes, some little tiny plum tomatoes. Then we'll take some product out to the restaurant, see them prepare it into a five-star meal, and we'll have another farm to the plate from Meet the Farmer TV. <laughs> so we do, uh, we harvest everything and just within a few minutes of harvesting it, uh, we cut it, put it in these boxes and bring it right in here to cool it. There's a date code on the back. Uh, it's a lot number. So if there's ever any issue, we know which lot was harvested when for recall. We just harvested these today. When the cucumbers are really young, we pull the baby cucumbers off uh, <laughs> before, so that the plant gets a little bit of time before it starts making cucumbers. So you get these edible garnishes. The whole thing's edible, flour and everything. You can just use it raw like that or you could braise it if you want. Some people like do a tempura dip. Nice. Uh, but they can, so it, it's, it's kind of like the baby squash, but it's a real cucumber flavor. You can taste one and see. Thank you. We do a, a micro celery. Micro beet. Perfect. Amazing. Yeah. These are little tiny celery tops. Oh, Great wow. with seafood. Yeah. Yeah. You can pass that around. Like uh -huh. You're saying something about distilling? What's that? You said something about distilling? <laughs> yes, we distill uh, essential oils from our herbs, and these are the hydrosols, the water portion that's left. So we, we do a steam distillation, a big pot, where steam goes through, uh, liberates the oils from the herbs, and then we condense the moisture and the oil, and then the oil separates to the top, and we pour that off. But any of it that's actually soluble in water becomes part of the hydrosol. Is that, is that the same as alcohol? Is it about 170, no. or, or is it lower? No, this is, this is just water. Water. There's no alcohol. It's not a fermented process, so we're not distilling alcohol. It's actually a steam distillation. Okay, so you have to bring it up to... Yeah, 212. Two okay. So, and then it, it brings the oils of the herbs with the steam out. You condense it, and then you separate the oil and the water. They can be used for like sprays if you want to flavor salads. And in fact, somebody's doing some of that stuff now, where they have like little test tubes <laughs> of flavors, and, and but they have salad sprays that you spritz stuff. Uh -huh. So you can see like mint, lemon verbena, rose geranium. Oh, verbena. Um, I love verbena. And uh, lemongrass, and uh, rosemary. I mean, it's really interesting to see. I don't know what one. Uh, and you can drink it. It's, you know, it's, it's a. Uh, How's that lemongrass? Yeah, there's some fresh lemongrass out there, too. I don't know if you can see, kind of, kind of smell it. Oh, wow. It's really intense. And that's four years old. So. <laughs> and it keeps that long. Yeah, we, uh, we put a little bit of silver pure silver, and silver uh, is an antimicrobial. Yeah, the lemongrass, we were always like, man, you should do pasta in this for a super tie or something. Yeah. Very flowery. Kind of. Does it taste like it? Go ahead. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's tremendous. Interesting. Huh? So we've got, you know, all the regular herbs, micro collards, micro tot soy. We'll see the stuff growing out there. But you can see how we bring everything in. Uh, any of the bulk herbs are in trays. We keep them in plastic so they don't get dried by the air. Uh, and then we usually get 21 days life. So anything that's like all these ones and stuff, they're going to the chickens. We pull stuff out of that and feed it to the chickens. <laughs> So our chickens eat really well, especially in a down economy. Our chickens are getting five-star meals all the time. 
Michelin star chickens right there. Yeah. At, least, at least somebody is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we can we can walk through the uh, hydroponic house. This is the hydroponic greenhouse. So this is where most of the salad greens and things are grown. Edible flowers and that sort of stuff. So you can just kind of walk in. I'll catch up with you. Yeah. Oh man. Here's the micro celery. The little, those are little micro celeries and uh, micro amaranth, baby beet greens back there. Uh, we're uh, cloning some uh, sage and tarragon, lemon verbena, and more sage. This is the arugula in an immature stage. It's just coming up. And the uh, uh, ba uh, <laughs> dill. So you can see we got a little baby basil. There are little cubes over there, a basil that's just sprouted. And then you'll see the basil gets taller and taller up to a set that we're about ready to take out. So it's so big and falling over. Same thing with the uh, Thai basil here. And there's Thai basil down the end that's kind of tired. Um, we do this watercress here and get this really nice, clean watercress. Still taste that. But I feel like Willy get... Wonka. Yeah, you know, when they're, when they're eating all that, right. eating the candy. And... But, you know, that can be a nice, pretty garnish. And the fact that it's edible and, and not uh, not bitter, I'm going to try it. What's this? Oh, this is Thai basil. Thai basil. Yeah, these are really nice little flowers. They're they're kind of kind of an anise flavor. You, kinda, you can smell it a little bit there. It's a little skunky. Yeah. But, uh, when they get bigger, they're, they're very sweet. So we'll see down that end. They're tall stems of it, and they're a very sweet anise. In fact, if you just dust a little bit of confectioner sugar in those things, they're great uh, dessert, dessert garnish. Oh, it is anise. It's a nice time. So we actually start some of the things under here, get them uh, sprouted, and then move them up to grow them. Um, and you can see here where he's harvesting uh, parsley. and. Uh, so that parsley is, is already clean and ready to go when you get it. Unlike most of the bunch parsley, it's yeah. pretty gritty. You gotta wash and that kind of stuff. So people really like that. I mean, it, it costs more, but if you're, you know, if you're on a line and you pull something out and you can use it right away and you didn't have to prep it, there's a lot of cost in that prep sure. and loss. You know, if you buy that stuff and wash it and then pack just, because see, he's cutting, the, he's pulling these bunches and he'll cut the long stems off. Here's some more of the micro, here's your micro basil, red basil growing. <laughs> so we'll come, uh, we just cut this, the micro celery today for uh, Palladio and Keswick and Joshua Wilton over in Harrisonburg. Um, the micro celery is pretty hardy. It doesn't really discolor anything if it gets cold. The basil doesn't like being real cold. So if you got like a 33 degree cooler or something, it's gonna, Gonna cause the basil shelf life to go down. The celery is fine. Amaranth is kind of tender too until it gets bigger. You can see there's a bigger stage there, and it'll actually grow six or eight feet tall and then put out the grain stalk, just like corn. Uh, so you can make things with that grain. Uh, but it's a great. It's kind of a spinachy flavor, but it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, color. It is beautiful. So you got some nice color choices with these things. We haven't come up with a lot of blue, so um, for presidential dinners now, we're going to have to figure out blue. <laughs> These are the wheatgrass trays. See where we're growing wheatgrass for the juice bars. They're also used uh, as table decorations. People will buy that tray and cut squares out, put it in a little square glass dish. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of weddings and catered events, they'll have those and they'll grow them shorter, about no bigger than that, maybe even shorter than that for those events so that they're nice on the table. Um, and I don't remember the size of the square dishes, but they're usually like four or five inches or something, so you get multiple of those out. I uh, tried something like that with cat grass, I saw. It. Uh -huh. Yeah, just in a vase, you know, and put some flowers around it. Yeah? Same thing. Did it go well? It did. And then yeah. I was lazy and it got too big. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, I it, didn't trim it. I mean, that, that we pulled out of the sprouter uh, yesterday it's already doubled in size. Man. Uh, Wednesday or Thursday, it'll be done, and we'll take it and put it in the cooler. Uh, and when we walk back out that way, I'll show you some that's just started up since then. So you see everything's kind of in this constant. There's a lot of monitoring. We're monitoring pH and conductivity. There are a lot of timers. Um, 
They, they cycle things on and off for the right moisture levels. They're actually chillers over here so we can maintain that solution at a different temperature than the air temperature. So the root zone and the top of the plant are at different temperatures, just like they are outside. Uh, that makes a big difference on the flavor of lettuces. If the roots of lettuce get hot over a certain temperature, there's a latex that's formed. Uh, it's the same like natural rubber, like a rubber plant. And the, the plant moves that latex up to keep the leaf from drying out. So it's like a wilt proof that it makes itself. But that's really white, milky, and bitter. So when you get lettuce from a hot summer day and you cut it, you'll see the white coming right out of the stem. And that, uh, it'll make that kind of bitter flavor of the lettuce. So we actually start things in the sprouter. When we go back through, we'll go and look at that sprouter. So we built a special system to start these things. Uh, we do the, the Johnny Jump Ups, the little violas as edible flowers. Mm -hmm. Quite a few of those. So this is a special system we built. Uh, it's got fog nozzles and they're on a timer. So they'll spend a few days in here. You can see this is the amaranth seed uh, just put in last night. This has another day on it. It started, they started turning red, started to sprout. We pre-sprout the beets and the cilantro for the micro cilantro and the micro beets uh, because they, the uh huh, because they don't want to sprout unless they have you know some pretty good pressure and contact, so they won't sprout as well in the open like these. So these seeds require a pre-sprouting like that, and then we'll move them out on the bench, and uh, and they'll finish growing. And they, yeah, so this little thing I can trigger it to the start so you can see it. It runs for like uh, one minute every hour, and it makes this real fine fog. You build this yourself? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, almost everything in here we build ourselves. Uh, these are special furnaces for burn, burn and use motor oil. Uh, we also burn vegetable oil, and that's what this barrel is here. It's some, a vegetable oil from the restaurant. So we'll pick up your fryer oil. Uh, we filter it. We'll see some tanks out here where we filter it and then it's a special, uh, it preheats and filters and blows air in at the same time as the pressurized oil. Most of the newer technology, the really, the really environmentally sensitive things require much more hands-on. Somebody that knows something to operate them. They're not simple turn the key, go to the gas station, put the stuff in. We, we do our own biodiesel out here. Uh, there's a, a fair amount of work for that, that production. It does cause some issues. It dissolves certain hoses. It, it lifts rust out of the tank. So we end up carrying tools and spare filters in the trucks that run on the biodiesel. So, and you'll often have to stop. And you know, you'll, you'll get to where you can't go more than 30 miles an hour and the filter's clogged up. You gotta oh, no. stop and change the filter. The vegetable oil turns almost to varnish just when it oxidizes. You can see a little bit on the ground there, sticky stuff. Uh, and when it burns, it clogs the heaters that way too. And these are, uh, um, so this is all from uh, the buses and the cars, you know, in the garages. And we put it in here and, and settle it and filter it. And I, I try not to get dirty, but that's part of the stain here to my yeah. jacket is the recycled oil. This is the big tomato and cucumber production. Wow. These are some little, little chili peppers. Awesome. I'm not going to eat it now. Yeah, I wouldn't eat that but one. But I do love yet. hot peppers. <laughs> These are the new cucumber plants. Um, so we, we prune the first parts of them. These ones you took the baby cucumbers off of? Uh-huh. Now, is this an annual? I mean, does it come back or? Is... It's not frost hardy. Yeah, it, mine always. Yeah, so it'll get. It never makes it. I can pass that along. That, that to me is more of the Fruit Loops now. Yeah, I love it. I, I had uh, a fried uh, verbena leaf as part of a dessert. And then yeah. And it was sugar. It was uh -huh. amazing. Yeah, it was really impressive. And it was a uh, chocolate with thyme time in it and then this for wow. leaves. Yeah, it's really creative. Now these sage flowers are wonderful. Um, yeah, it's, it has a wonderful smell. 
But they're also they're pretty. beautiful. It's like an orchid almost. Yeah, they are very orchid-like. Lady slippers. Yeah. So you can pull off the individual pieces and, and use them as a garnish or um, candy them again. And this is, this only comes on the older plants and only at certain times. Well, we'll get multiple flowerings a year because we're in here. Normally you'd only get it once a year. And if they were outside, they would not be as beautiful. They get, they get wind burned and kind of torn up. So let's walk around the outside and we'll go down to the flower house and down the bottom field before it gets dark. That's impressive. Yeah, I would never want to drive that. I might never yeah. see it. <laughs> I might not ever see it. So here we have things actually growing in the ground. No, please. Uh, that's okay. a bay laurel, so we get fresh bay leaves. Oh, thank you. Uh, you dry those out yourself? Or you we just harvest them, them and put them in the cooler. We never actually Sorry. physically dry them. Um, these are kefir limes in the big pots there. So we have uh, Which, fresh kefir lime leaves. Yeah, the limes are pretty intense. There should be some little ones here. They're just flowering and starting to form. Yeah, there's one, a little lime. I've been using a lot of his leaves. A little bit orange. So you can just pop Thank the whole you. thing in your mouth. It's kind of tart. It's like uzu. These are the, uh, the kefir limes. So one lime is like 10 pounds a leaf. Wow. Just barely scratch the surface with your nail and smell it, you'll get the... I've been using a lot of your leaves. I get them from uh, Foods of All Nations. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Good. I love so the flowers. Good. The beautiful flowers. In fact, we've got a huge picture of those flowers in the house. Oh, here we have the world's smallest baby asparagus. <laughs> we were trying to grow micro asparagus. I don't know. They're not very many. That one's kind of tough, but... Here, Mark, here's a tender one. <laughs> Can you it's imagine insane. those on a plate? Brian was, <laughs> that was on the, our list of questions. Yeah, well, it's really hard because you have to like dwarf them and, uh, and you get so few. Because if they get any decent growth, they're too big. They just right. come up huge. So we actually have to keep them crowded like this and it hasn't worked out. We've had, you know, we probably get 30 asparagus a year of that size. This is the well, asparagus fern. Really? So within a few days of that little thing you just ate, it becomes this. Oh, wow. And then these become these ferns and flowers. And then this is the seed. So it's very rapid. Uh, every day you've got to pick those That's little. Cute. Yeah. The bamboo is like, it's an amazing grass. And it's tremendous erosion control because it creates this mat of roots. Right. It'll crack concrete. Yeah, you can't, it doesn't go away though, does yeah. it? Yeah. Well, I was thinking they should put this all around Louisiana for the uh, the dikes, yeah. and they'd never breach. It's <laughs> such a good, like, filler in any garden that, I mean, is there no way that you could, like... Well, metal. Metal. And yeah, if you put steel up, it won't it won't pierce the steel, and probably copper is toxic to it, too. Right. You have a pottery farm, a pottery house in Yep, there. this is the pottery. Oh. Uh, it's also the main well is inside that building. Uh, we uh, we were doing crystal and glaze pottery in there, uh, and back when Tokyo Rose was open, we were making little sushi dishes for them. Nice. Well, I guess Tokyo Rose is still there, but it's a new owner. Uh, so these are the rows that we'll be planting this spring. There's already some spinach and, and kale. There's probably some turnips down here too. Mm -hmm. If the the birds and the deer don't dig them all up, we've got some baby turnips. Oh. So, uh, you know, they're starting to, to root through and, and what they do really is they're biting the little greens and then they pull it up and then they throw it back down. Then they're just trying to pinch the, eat the greens off the top. You hear some young spinach coming up, you can see. Uh, and as it warms up, this stuff will take off. What melons do well in Virginia? Almost anything we can, we can get going fairly well. But, uh, you know, this will, in another month or two, it'll start, we'll be able to start picking from this spinach. All of these rows here, you can kind of see little little spotty bits of spinach. And then when the spinach is done, we'll till it, and uh, those plants that we've got in there now will come out as plugs, and we'll put down like a, a weed fabric and stakes and, and plug all this. And, and um, I know some of the uh, videos that are already 
up from last year. Show us with these rows of eggplants and peppers, and, and uh, but you can still still see there's a lot of spinach sure. uh, to come. And this bottom land here is some of the best. It's very deep soil. There's a river that runs right through here. This is Blue Run. Uh, the famous Swift Run is just on the other side, and they meet right there in that corner, kind of where that bamboo is. And that Swift Run goes up over uh, the mountains, and that's the Spotswood Trail where they first discovered the Shenandoah Valley. They followed the, the Swift Run Gap. So this is Blue Run. And just on the other side of the woods is Swift Run, and they, they run together right up here. So if you look on a map for the confluence of Blue Run and Swift Run, you kind of got us pegged. So we tried to, to preemptively do things, and that's why I was saying we stopped using the stream water. Uh, we're trying to do our own testing, and uh, we're doing these low levels of chlorine dioxide instead of chlorine uh, to, to give some insurance. They want to do that too with the poultry too, don't they? Don't they want... Well, they, they, they the, want to put a chip in every animal. Mm -hmm. So and there's so a microchip like in your passports in every animal, and, and that's kind of burdensome to small farms. Um, and so I don't know how... It, it's hard to find that balance. Yeah. Uh, but I can tell you when we went to TE Meats, you could tell which hogs came from Polyface and which came from up north. I mean, his hogs, they were shiny. They look like pets. They came and sniffed you and were friendly. The other ones were scared to death and were, you know, tried to charge you and kill you and they were dirty and gray and they just looked totally different. Mm -hmm. um, and so somebody that really cares about their animals and, and, and really puts that love and quality into it, it, it's visible through. Now, most people never see that once things are butchered. You probably see more of it in the greens. You know, you can tell our basil versus something that comes sure. in a package. Um, and that's part of what we're trying to do by involving you here. Like, all right, you'll come back in a few months and see some of the things that you wanted to have and they'll be growing. And then midsummer, we'll be bringing them in and through the fall, they'll be coming in. Um, so we try to, try to make that connection that you couldn't really get if you were buying it from California or Colorado right. or something. We further put a lot number on and, um, and we're doing sell-by dates and we're, there, we're being requested to provide not only liability insurance, but recall insurance. So if there's ever oh, a problem, a <laughs> I know, God. you get compensated for removing so the, the problem. And it's just like, how many, you know, you keep laying these layers on and I don't know, you know, you, you, people will disappear. So yeah. it's really important we develop these kinds of relationships for you to get what you want. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, people like me are gonna disappear and you won't have any choice, but where country did the chives come from today? <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah. And, and you won't have the opportunity to say, I want this kind of eggplant. Can you grow this? Or, or for us to say, man, this, we never you know, thought about this, but this came in really good this year. What can you do with it? That kind of stuff. And we've seen that when we, when we took a chef to TE Meats over in Harrisonburg and, and uh, they were doing a particular kind of lamb cuts for one customer and they had a bunch of prime lamb cuts that they didn't sell. Uh, and so that chef was like, well, I'll put that as a special on the menu. So they worked out a deal and, and he promoted it on his menu and, and it worked out good for both of them. You know, he was afraid he was going to lose that meat and, and the chef got it at a lower price right. than he normally sure. would and was able to promote a local product. We well, want to walk back up. So there, you know, there were times last year where we had too many eggplants. And, you know, there was a guy in Barracks Road we didn't even know about that's desperate and couldn't get any eggplants. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, part of what we're trying to do is network in that way so that we're not, we're not really competitors as much as collaborators to, to help things, things out. And most people haven't really been thinking that way. I, I always thought business breeds business. Yeah. You know, in our yeah. situation, a restaurant opens up next block over. Like, uh -huh. great. That's uh, more traffic. More traffic, yeah. and it's it's good. Yeah. It's good for all of us. Yeah. They're not. We're they not doing the same thing. Too much reservations, things. and we get the spillover. If they're yeah, yeah. willing to wait, then they're going to come to our restaurant. And yeah, that's good. Maybe it's, business we wouldn't have normally gotten. So yeah, we introduce yeah introduce our guests to yeah something new, or you know uh, Duffy next door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> his guests in our world. But, well, we can right. provide two hours. Yeah, have a cocktail. and these are some of our rows of of uh, 
raspberries. Those are huge. And they, uh, they've done very well. This year they got frozen back a little more than normal. So we'll have to see how that they come back from that. So you till it all up together and then go back and form the... No, it, it does, it does it all at once. once. In fact, I, I ask them to move something. We can do a demo uh -huh. if it starts. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to lay down out there. Come on. <laughs> so, anything else you want to see or Anybody want to talk about stuff you wanted, your wish list, or Brian. well, <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, Brian, Brian had this. some ideas. Okay. About the, a wish list. Okay. Yeah, I got them all written down. Or like some of the stuff like you already have, like especially like micro amaranth. Micro uh -huh. basil and uh, the opal basil, yeah. okay. micro arugula, just stuff you already do. But then yeah, like black carrots. We're wondering if y'all do any carrots out here. Yeah, we've done. We're we're gonna do some more. We had a, a dark purple one, but I haven't had a black one. Well, I mean, it's, like, it's the same thing, but it's just yeah, yeah purple. Haze. Does purple it cook out? Here? Does it keep no, its color? Is it like the beans? You, I don't know. Like, if you poach them, they they stay. Like if you just blanch them, they stay the purpleness on the inside. But really That's good. good. Um, and we saw in some seed catalog purple Brussels sprouts. I don't know if y'all have ever done any uh -huh. Brussels sprouts out there. Well, let, us, let us put our thinking caps on too. I mean, mine has yeah, I got a couple some pages. more ideas. <laughs> yeah, a couple of pages. But yeah, well, good. Like y'all are already doing, but I mean, like, do y'all do like baby romaine? If we could get like baby heads of romaine to do like. Usually the baby romaine is actually grown big and stripped down. Uh -huh. When we do them baby, they don't, they're not firm. Right. Uh, we were also wondering about like any kind of like baby lettuce that would be like individual servings, like um, so like a Tom Thumb uh -huh. lettuce. Okay. Yeah, those are pretty. Or, like, small like that that you could do like individual salads, having like the whole. Uh huh. Thing. So, um, and I know you do yellow wax beans. Uh -huh. I wonder if you would do like yellow French green beans, like a little. So a yellow, the the thin French. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, we, saw, we know you do uh, the English cucumbers. We're wondering about like pickling cucumbers. Uh huh. We've actually just started some that are similar to the English cucumbers, but half the length. Half the length. We were thinking like paprika peppers. So we were talking about uh -huh. drying our own and then smoking them and getting yep. those ready. Um, and then just any kind of tomatoes. We were thinking like to have like a little small green ripe tomato, like the zebra stripes. Uh huh. And then um, any kind of like medium small purple size. Like okay. Um, and then I know y'all do the orange aromas, right? Mm-hmm. We did orange and yellow. Do and do we're a, doing some plums now, so our uh, grapes. They're like that size. Right. I was wondering about like teardrop. Do y'all do teardrop? Now what's what's teardrop? It's like the one. Is it like, like a grape? Uh, it's like more like a pear shape. Than teardrop. The, uh, yeah, yellow. Baby, yeah, the, the baby yeah, pear yeah, oh, tomato. Is that what they are? I usually eat them all. <laughs> <laughs> And we were thinking about like either like the current tomatoes or the uh -huh. tomatoes, the ones that are like really, really tiny ones. Because those are always good okay. for. So now we've met with Mark and his staff from La Trois Restaurant. They've seen the farm. We've talked about some things to grow. So join us next time when we go to the restaurant and see what they do with all of this wonderful fresh produce. For additional information and extended versions of this program, visit our website, www.meetthefarmer.com. Meet the Farmer TV was made possible by the generous support of Planet Earth Diversified and Melly Productions, with additional support from Flavor Magazine, serving the Piedmont's local food and wine culture.